Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of the Raving Patients podcast. My name is Dr. Len Tao, coming to you from sunny Florida. Uh, today's guest actually is from Boise, or from Idaho, excuse me. And um, we met at the Dental Intel Summit in 2019, September actually of 2019. And ever since then, I've wanted to have this guest on as, as a guest, but we never connected till now. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the real reasons why your patients stay and refer other patients to you. And I'm a big fan of patients who refer because my practice is a fee-for-service practice. So if you're out there and you wanna become a fee-for-service practice or you wanna have patients refer to you, you know, listen to this episode. My guest today is Jen Kirkham. Jen, thanks for uh, joining me today on the Raving Patients Podcast. I look forward to spending the next uh, 45 minutes with you um, telling people why people refer and stay in your practice. Uh, so Jen, uh, let me introduce you first. Um, uh, sure. Let me read your mm -hmm. bio and then I'll, I'll have you expand on your bio as it's, it's very expansive. Um, and then we'll uh, jump into the, the topics that we wanna talk about today, okay? Sounds great. So Jen is a Keystone member of the dental community as a hygienist, a leader, and a business strategist. Having influenced over a thousand practices and teams in complete health has brought her deep understanding of clinical practice of dentistry practice leadership and executive leadership. She's been an integral part of building an in-person and online programs that serve the dental community through hygiene programs, clinical airway programs, digital products, and business development practices. Her current focus is integrating definitive and reliable, re reliable accountability systems for teams looking to or currently integrating airway as co-founder and visionary and integrator of GPS, Gelb Practice Solutions. Jen's signature approach to opportunities and services for teams and executives is through a strengths discovery of the team, maximize working systems, and employs a coach mentality in all aspects of operations. So Jen, thanks for joining me today. I look forward to uh, speaking with you. Oh my gosh, it's an ultimate honor to be here. Uh, it's it's so true, meeting in person and we see opportunities in the past and it's so good to finally connect and and uh, to be able to interact this way. So thanks for having me, first of all. Appreciate that. Well, again, thanks thanks for joining me, and uh, I, I appreciate you finding the time to uh, to speak with me and my audience. Yeah, um, absolutely. So as I said, why don't you expand on your bio a little bit? Um, obviously, it's pretty vast. You've worked for a number of different companies. Um, so why don't you kind of give us your journey um, yeah. in the dental space? And, uh, and then, like I said, then we'll jump into why uh, your patients stay and refer. Absolutely. I think in order to understand really who I am in my journey, um, you know, it always goes back to our pivotal, pivotal life experiences, maybe as a kid or at certain key points in our lives. And, um, and mine ties back to my, pa oh, sorry about that, my passion, my passion for preventative health. And that led me into the profession of dental hygiene. Um, I mean, even at the young age of like seven or eight, I saw my grandfather got really ill and it, he got ill from this big word called arteriosclerosis. And it's the hardening of the arteries. And, and I was like, oh, that's just something that happens, right? As a kid, you just see that's just something. Um, but through the years, I learned that those things can be prevented. It's not something that has to happen. So going into dental hygiene, I always, um, it seems like I, I had to work harder than everybody else, but that passion for preventive health really kept me driving forward. And so the program that I was enrolled in, um, we not only went through the technical piece of dental hygiene, but we also went through the business of the dental practice, as well as the cutting, then the cutting edge uh, technologies of understanding the oral and systemic link. So going into private practice, I already felt like I, I had a leg up of, of recognizing the impact of the service that we provided in dental practice. And then just because I'm a naturally curious person, I lean on my intuition and I push myself in all things, is I ended up being the one in the practice that was implementing new technologies, looking for ways to enhance the practice and end up leading hygiene teams, leading innovations and implementing things in the practice. So I became um, a product educator on the days that I wasn't working clinical, and that opened up a whole new world of possibilities. Um, a product educator from one company and then bringing on another company. Um, 
and then I, I went into, uh, was recruited to a practice management company. And that was the fastest learning curve of my life because it gave me a total new perspective of the ins and outs of operating a dental practice in ways that I didn't previously understand. So I'm a really firm believer that our careers and lives happen in chapters and phases for a reason, and important to follow the breadcrumbs and connect the dots along the way. So having an understanding of clinical, clinical um, an aspect and, and preventative medicine has been my foundation from the very beginning. Gotcha, gotcha. So talk about, um, you know, before we jump into some of the stuff, I want to get a little bit clarity on, on what you currently do. Because I know when we when we first met, you were working for a different company, um, and you've mm -hmm. gone. I know you've had a number of things since then. So, Gail Practice Solutions, uh, and you call yourself the co-founder, uh, vision and visionary and integrator. So, j <laughs> just touch base on that first, so those listening understand what that is. Yeah, sure thing. Um, you know the relationships that and and the and the opportunities that I had working for that practice management company. We developed programs and practice solutions. And those relationships are ties into what I'm doing now. So because I've been um, introduced to business strategy systems, operating systems, plus the clinical application, that ties into being the visionary and integrator. Yes, those are usually two different roles, but I'm serving as both roles for the company and co-founding the movement of integrating airway into practice. Now, Guild Practice Solutions, it's a specific method and approach that it actually helps identify patients with airway issues that are going undiagnosed and flying under the radar. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's pretty cool. So mm -hmm. um, I am a big believer, as I mentioned during the uh, beginning introduction, I'm a big believer and a fan of, of patient referrals. Yeah. Uh, you know, BirdEye has a new product. Uh, you probably don't know yet, but BirdEye has a new product that helps um, get referrals from existing patients. It's, you know, it's, it's word of mouth on steroids, as I like to say. Um, Love it. So uh, the product basically sends an electronic message to the patient and asks them to share the office's information on Facebook, text message, email, Facebook Messenger. There's another couple other ways they can do it as well. So uh, it's been a huge, huge boost to the practice because there's only so many things that can say, yeah, we, we're accepting new patients, refer your friends and family. And the patients say, of course I'll do it, and they never do it. Um, or you, right. you hope they do it, but they never do it. So mm -hmm. so let, let's spend the rest of the time talking about you know why your patients want to stay in the office, also why they refer to you. And I know a lot of it comes down to you know connecting with the patients, um, trust the patients trusting you and those people coming in trusting you. So let, let's, let's start, let's talk about um, where do you wanna begin the conversation? Well, I think because we're all human, I think the, the natural place to begin is really connection. Um, I think 2020 has taught us that having a disconnection um, is, is really, a, unpredictable things can happen but when there is a connection between the practice and the patient in a really integral way where patients are emotionally connected to what the value of services that you are providing meaning that they're emotionally engaged in the service they um you know they get excited to come to their appointments they get excited to see you and when people are excited and emotionally connected people naturally want to share that with others and so when they have exciting times at the appointment, when you emotionally connect with a patient before the appointment even happens, then they're going to say, oh, yeah, you're top of mind. And they're going to naturally want to share the good word of what you do because they're emotionally connected to it. So and I agree with you 100 percent. So one of the things I do is all new patients who book an appointment in my schedule, I just don't do hygiene, all new patients who book an appointment in my schedule, I reach out to before their appointments, introduce myself, introduce, introduce them to the practice, basically welcome, uh, find out what they're looking to come in for. I, I want to start, I call it basically disarming the patients, um, getting them comfortable with the practice. I've been, I've been setting myself up differently for many, many years, and this really is just me being different than everybody else. Because most, I call new patients or I call people on the weekends when they want to schedule an appointment, I call them too. It just makes the patient super impressed before they even walk in the door. So many times they come in and they're sold before they even, you know, hear what things cost because they, they know how I treat it from a customer service experience. And they already trust me because of all the great reviews I have online. It's kind of like a little circular, uh, circular thing that I developed because I bring them in because they trust me. I, I make sure I reach out to them so they trust me even more. And when they come in, they almost have no choice but to say yes to the treatment I recommend. 
Mm -hmm. I, I had to chuckle a little bit when you said the word sold before they even come in, because I think it's important to know that that our patients are buying services from us, that we are in sales, whether you realize it or not. And and one of the core fundamental why, ways that people buy from people that they like, that they trust. And um, it's all about like meeting them wherever they're starting from. And you just go along this journey and, and solve problems for them. That's all you get to do. You get to solve problems for them and with them. A hundred percent. So, so let's talk about, um, trust. Cause I, tr I think trust is a, is a very big deal. I think if people don't trust you, one, they will leave. Okay. Um, they will write a bad review for you too. Um, but they definitely won't accept treatment. So let's mm -hmm. talk about, um, how important the trust is and anything that you recommend from a trust perspective. Well, I think in order to answer that question, I think I need to ask you a, a reciprocal question. Um, I I saw that you have a wedding band on. I assume that you're married or in or in a long term relationship with a, a significant other. Yes, I am married. <laughs> I've yes. been married for <laughs> Ju June this year will be 15 years. So, <laughs> okay. When you think of like you know you love your spouse, you love your wife, and. Um, can you think of the exact moment that you started loving her? When do you love her? Um, like well, I, you know, it's funny. I always say, you know, uh, when we argue, I always say, I may not always uh, love you, but I, I mean, I may not always like you, but I love you. I always love you. Um, so I, <laughs> I, I would say we, we, ha we had an interesting, um, uh, I met her online through a company called a uh, program called J date. Um, and we went on like literally in the first week we went on like four dates. <laughs> so, so it's a very, 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 um, fast, uh, romance, I guess you can say. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, very early in the relationship, I had been coming off another, I was married and divorced. Um, and I was coming off a relationship then. Um, but very quickly did I know I loved her within the first couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, that's awesome. I, that's like that intuition, that instant connection. Um, I always relate to love and trust, like the same rules apply because you don't, you can't say I, I trust someone or I don't trust someone. I mean, intuitively you can say that and know that, but really trust is a bunch of opportunities that you either, that you either reinforce trust or you pull it away. It's just like an, an account, right? There's either debits or credits. You're either applying more trust or you're starting to take it away. And people can trust you for certain things. Um, and it's important to understand that trust and reliability are two separate but related things. So, so patients can trust their dental care with you. They can trust you with personal things that are influencing their, their health and wellness. Um, they can trust your team members to do certain things. They can trust you for certain things. And it all, it's also important to be reliable through integrity to follow through on those things that they trust you for. And it's the same with love. Like any time that we want to deepen a connection and a relationship with anybody in our lives, that we constantly add to the account, add to the account. So th I think that's important. Gotcha. So no, I, I definitely look, I, I think it's, I think it's very, very important. Um, so let me ask you if you can give any advice and I, I gave you one, you know, calling patients ahead of time, get them to, to, to connect with you because I think making the connection with the patients, I think, look, I'm a very good salesperson. Um, and I, and I know very quickly when I meet somebody, um, whether it's on the phone for bird eye or whether it's in person, uh, in my dental office, I know very quickly whether someone's buying from you or not. You can just see the way you interact, the way you connect, the way you talk, the way they talk back, the way they respond to your questions. I mean, there are people, if they're, I mean, if they're looking around like this when I'm talking to them, I mean, they're lost, nothing's happening there. Um, but you just get that, I, I call it the warm fuzzy feeling a lot of times. So why don't you give some suggestions or, or, or top or ideas on ways that a dentist or a practice can better connect with their patients to get them to buy from them, stay and refer. Gotcha. Um, I think the biggest thing is looking at your marketing 
And here's all the dental practices. Look at your marketing, you look at your marketing calendar. The number one thing that you can do is to run that by your team and tell them what's being marketed so that they can understand the messaging. If you have messaging that's going out for external marketing, if you're looking for new patients or looking to do internal marketing to boost a certain service for your patients, but your internal team has no idea about that communication, think about it. Your patients are getting conflicting information. It's not reliable messaging. They can't trust the messaging. And so the number one thing that you must do is educate your team on the marketing that's happening in the practice so that they continue the message in their conversation with the patients. Gotcha. Gotcha. And it's as um, easy as a marketing any, calendar. He said, he said it's as easy as a marketing calendar is what you said. Mm -hmm. Incorporate the marketing calendar into your daily huddle. Okay. All right. Um, so, so that's from a marketing perspective. Um, you're obviously trying to connect with patients a certain way. What other ways, let's say from the, from the practice level, the team, the doctor, what other things have you seen practices do to, I, I call it, set them apart from other practices. Wow. The patient, if they give them that experience before they come in, they have a better shot of getting them to stay in the practice. Mm. Um, multiply key phrases among the team. So, so like you call your patients on the weekend and you say, you probably say key phrases that represent your brand, represent your practice. And my ask for dental practices and doctors and team members, like communicate as a team to make sure that your entire team is saying those key phrases. So like if you have, do you have a mission state with your practice? You're, you're a fee for service practice. Do you have a mission statement or a key phrase that represents your brand? Something they like a, a tagline per se. Yeah, yeah, dentistry for the quality conscious. Uh, okay. okay. Or, hold on, I just had an audio issue. Can you still hear me now? Yep. Okay. I can hear you, yep. So, okay. Um, are you closing your own cases? Do you do all your treatment planning yourself as well, or do you have other team members help you with that, or...? So I, um, so I teach a workshop called the art of the, the art of the sale and art of dental financing. And what makes me, I would say different than other practices is that I do the treatment coordination and I do the financing coordination. So I'm, I'm figuring out the way to make the patient's treatment more affordable. Oh, okay. So that's my job in my office. I know it's against every guru's thought processes, but I've been very good at it for a long time and I get the patients to say, yes, that's what I do. So well, I've never the, given it up. I mean, the, the, the controversy here is obviously that from an outsider's perspective is that you as a doctor, you're doing all of those things. You're wearing multiple hats. How can you possibly? That would be the general conversation. But really what you've done is that you're using the same language from before the patient comes in, walking them through different phases of the treatment. You're using the same phrases. You're reinforcing the relationship, reinforcing those that tagline that brands you. Um, but just because a dental practice doesn't operate the same way as you as the doctor doing all of those steps, they can still incorporate repeating key phrases at key times in the appointment, right? So if they, if they know that- So what are some suggestions you have? Sorry, I no, apologize. No a little bit so of a delay. <laughs> that, that's all good. So whoever is calling to welcome the patient to the, the office before their appointment, they, they clearly state what the appointment is for. Welcome to our practice. This is practice, you know, this is so-and-so. I work with Dr. Len Tao. Um, you know, we make practice affordable, you know, yeah, their tagline, right? So you have the receptionist or the, someone contacting the patient via phone saying that tagline. When they're physically welcomed into the practice, they hear the same kind of thing. Then they go down, to, let's say it's a wellness appointment for their hygiene appointment. The hygienist says, hey, welcome to our practice, and da-da-da-da-da, here's the tagline. Just so you know, this appointment is a wellness appointment, and we look for key things, and we're, again, reinforce the tagline. Then they go through the appointment process, and then there's a series of repetition. If somebody hears the same kind of things through multiple people multiple times, it's a, it's a subliminal thing, like an Ocean's Eleven effect. I like, I love that movie. Like, that last bet where where that like they knew something was going to happen it was predictable 
It's because they pre-programmed the pathway for somebody to recognize repeated things. And you just do that in the dental appointment. So whether it be a welcome and a tagline. So you, so you want to have a, you basically want to send a consistent message throughout the times you're interacting with the patients. So when Absolutely. a patient calls and I tell them that we're going to find them affordable treatment during the, during the, uh, you know, the case presentation or during the financial presentation, I repeat, I repeat the same process. It will be able to find, hopefully be, be able to find you affordable treatment. So they know that if we do, I mean, I use a lot of things. I use a lot of psychology when I'm speaking to patients, I'm nodding my head a lot of times. So it's, Hey, if I can find you, you know, an affordable payment option, you're going to proceed with treatment. Aren't you? The patients always say yes when I do that because I'm not in my head at the same time. So it, it's definitely the, the messaging that you're giving to the patients, um, I think, is a, is a very big deal here. I agree with you 100 percent with that. Absolutely. And you know what that gives the patient is clarity. It gives them clarity gotcha. and expectations and understanding what service you're going to provide for them. That's what that's the real thing makes here. sense. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, the, 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 you have to be clear. The clarity is a very big deal of it, too. Look, it sounds like you have to connect with the patient. You have to make things very clear to them. You have to get them to trust you before they actually will end up buying from you. I think those are like three major factors that you're referring to here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I do want to address um, a common, I don't know, mishap or things that I've seen in practice. When I practiced, I saw it all the time. And, um, and I want to identify the 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 symptom that you'll see in the practice like you say oh my gosh we have this problem in my practice i want to tell you about the symptom but there's a core issue here so so let me tell you about the symptom first so the symptom is if anybody's heard this the usually it's the hygienist saying i have to wait forever for an exam it takes too long i can't okay. get the doctor to come to an exam have you ever heard that before <laughs> no never um right? i i hear it all, all the time uh, and I, I'm actually very good um, in, in, in making sure I get to the hygienist as quickly as possible during an exam process. But I hear that a lot throughout the industry. Yes. Yeah. And another thing that you'll hear is the, the dental assistant is standing outside the hygiene operatory, tapping the foot and be like, ah, oh, the exams take forever. I'm waiting on the doctor. We're always waiting on the doctor. You've never heard that before, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, haven't heard that at all, though. Never. Of course, yes. That's normal during, <laughs> during, during our clinical day. It's normal for that to happen. Of course. Well, well, those are some symptoms. And here's, here's a, a, a controversial belief. If we spend more time with the patient, they'll trust us and they'll like us more and they'll proceed with treatment. I, you know, I'm going to say that that's not necessarily true. More time does not always equal more trust in the patient moving forward with treatment. The, instead, you know, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Challenge me. Challenge no, me. No, I was going to say, I, I, no, I was going to say, I don't necessarily, I, I definitely agree with you there because there's some dentists out there that they have an hour and a half or two hour initial visit and that, and, and their case acceptance sucks. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I spend time with my patients. I do, but I don't spend an hour and a half and two hours with them to, to do everything we need to be doing. It's just, that's too much of my time. So I, I don't, I agree with you that you don't need to spend, you know, that much time with your patients especially uh, you talk about a hygiene visit, you know, look, ask them how they're doing, look at their mouth, see if there's any changes, see if anything bothers them, get the report from the hygienist. You could be out of there in, in, in two or three minutes. I know some dentists that take 10 minutes in exam. I mean, that, I mean, there's, I think there's sometimes too much information you're, you're providing them or giving them too much information or spending too much time with them. And I think it affects the whole day in general. It affects the hygiene schedule. It affects the doctor's schedule and it throws everything off anyway. So that may not be the best way to do things. Mm hmm I mean, it really comes down to, like, if you put yourself in the patient's seat. Um, after leaving clinical, I had this opportunity, and it was like staring me in the face. Is it if I got a laundry list of things that I needed to do, or a list of laundry things that were going to happen? After the first three, I was like, ah, okay, you know, and you know, it was for my kids. They had a complicated ortho case or what have you. All your patients need to know, what is the general problem? What happens if they don't move forward? And what do they receive when they do move forward? 
if you just state those three mm. things, and then once you get like that nod plan, right? Like when you're talking, if I can make this an affordable reason, right? If I can, sh if I can resolve mm -hmm. this problem for you so that you don't have to suffer with B, you know, then, then this can happen and you get agreement. And then all you do is state the first next step. Great. Here's our first next step. And that doesn't take first very long next step. All. Interesting. Just the first next step. And if that patient is, if their personality is where they have to dig into all the details, then you can spend the time to where they don't have to dig for details and you get them to take commitment. Do you see it? Like, so mm -hmm. yes, take time with your patients, but more time does not always equal case acceptance. It's how you use the time, how you approach it. Gotcha. Gotcha. So um, let's talk about the psychology, why people spend money or buy from you, okay, mm -hmm. and keep on coming back for more. Um, I think it all has to do, I think everything ties in we spoke about, but um, there is, I think you, you had given me the information that you there's a phenomenon happening in the buying power of the consumer. I think the, buy, the buying power of the consumer has changed significantly over the years. Absolutely. Um, so talk about how you think the psychology plays a role in this, in this process. It all comes down to pain or fun. But you've heard pain or pleasure, right? People buy mm -hmm. to get away from pain. They have a big problem and it's annoying. It's costing them money. It's literally painful. Or they want whitening. They want straighter teeth. And that's why we see the phenomena of like Smile Direct Club. You know, we see a direct to consumer route, which is disrupting the dental industry. They're like, what's going on? It's simply that patients have a greater uh, access to solving a problem or a pain or getting what they want. So, so we have to approach mm. everything like that. So when we're, doing, when we're talking case acceptance, if we have a big case or a small case, we have to clearly identify, are they moving? What's going to help this patient move forward and address both of them? So, so, um, so like for, for airway, for example, patients don't come into a practice and say, I have an airway issue. They just don't do that. <laughs> Instead, they, they, have, they have jaw pain from clenching. Oh, I'm just stressed. I'm just, I'm just stressed. Actually, is there something more? Let's talk about that pain. Let's get you out of pain. Or my husband st says that I snore. I don't snore. But then you look inside the mouth. You're like, you know, it, it'd probably be nice to sleep together with your husband again, wouldn't it? You see how it's a different conversation moving away from pain or going towards pleasure. You address both. Man, that could be embarrassing. If you go to a girl's night and you start snoring, oh my gosh, that, that's embarrassing. And wouldn't you like to sleep in bed with your husband again? It's all about the pain and pleasure. Interesting. That's something I never thought of before, but it makes sense if you think about it. Mm -hmm. um, that makes a lot of sense. So let's talk about getting the team involved with some of this stuff. And um, one of the other things we wanted to talk about was what, uh, let's talk about a big thing called effective meetings. Okay. Cause I think um, just having a, a, a daily huddle or, or a monthly um, you know, team meeting um, doesn't always work. And why is it working? Because the meetings aren't effective. Just getting together um, and, and talking is not an effective meeting. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. Um, and they say, well, we get together and we talk, but what is it we talking about? And is the meeting effective or not? So can, can we talk about um, what, what effective meetings have to do with this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the dental practice is designed to be a, a team, a cohesive team that's clear on serving patients that we all wear different roles and we have to be clear on our roles and understand the impact of service that we provide. So how an effective meeting comes into play is that everybody understands that they're a valuable member of the team, that they're aligned to, everyone hears this phrase, aligned to a vision, right? You know, marching at the same beat, those kind of things. What that really is, is understanding that you're important, that you're part of the team, 
let's communicate and work together. Now, I've been in dentistry long enough to know that it's kind of like working in a dental practice is kind of like a family, is that sometimes you really love them and then there's times that you love them but don't like them. And, um, you know, people have different personalities. So one of the da most dangerous things that we can do is work together as a team and communicate. <laughs> so where effective meetings come into play is that we rely on the strengths of the team. Yes, everybody has their weaknesses. Nobody's going to be perfect. Rather than seeking perfection in the day, look at people's strengths and see where they can lean into those strengths to fill their role to their best of ability. And because we're operating in a business, everybody should have a number, should have a measure, right? So, so relate that goal and that measure to what it means for the patient that's getting served. So we rely on the strengths, communicate to those strengths, and then tie it to a measure that we're looking at. Not to say good, bad, not to use as a weapon, but instead to really measure how we're playing the game. If we, I mean, I just watched March Madness. Did you see that in the in the um, the 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 game right before the final the final four? Did you see Gonzaga's yep. shot? Yep. That Half was a three quarter shower. Uh, yeah. I mean, why sure. did he make that shot? Moments. That was that was a pivotal moment for him. Hours of practice led up to him making that one shot. Could you imagine watching that game and not keeping score? I mean, it brings out the competitive, brings out the best in us to really try and improve. And hey, you know, what if he didn't make that shot? He wouldn't be any less of an individual, right? When they when they lost to um, Baylor, Baylor just played a better game, right? They were just better conditioned. Gonzaga is still a really great team. The reason why I bring all this up is that lessons are learned along the way. But if you don't keep score, you don't allow yourself a competitive feel to continue to improve. That doesn't mean that you're never good enough and that you won't ever get there. That's just not the case. All it's doing is help keeping score and help keeping that, that drive alive. And when you rely on the strengths of your team through effective meetings and reinforcing those, then, then magic really happens. But I, no, I that's wanna, what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. But, but I want to like be real here for a second. Can I be real? I'm like Frank. Sure, definitely the, be real. The, the dental day is full of problems and issues. Like, I mean, ones that you can't count on, we're working with patients, you know, a procedure might not go well. Just what, there's always constant problems and issues. So, we, you know, if you think, what, what does an effective meeting have to do with that? Can we prepare for every issue? No, you can kind of anticipate, but effective meetings help establish communication so that when those issues arrive, you have the channels to solve just one issue at a time. That's actually something that I love to do. I, I love having hard conversations. I, I got a lot of practice. <laughs> hey, hard conversations are not the easiest. That's why we, we as, as dentists, um, we try to, to uh, I guess, hold off on those hard conversations, but sometimes you've got to do it and there's no choices. So. Uh, hard conversations are not are not the easiest things in, in the office. I can tell you that from a business perspective. No. Um, so be, before we go into um, the fun part of my podcast, not that this has been fun, and, and do the um, the would you rather's, um, is there anything else that you wanted, uh, other than giving people your information at the end, is there anything else that you wanted to touch base on from a topic perspective, speaking point perspective? Um. You know, I really just, the main key message that I want to relay, if, if people get nothing else from this, is that I know that the dental profession is ready for amazing things. And that when we rely on the strengths of others and like lean into our own curiosity and be the best of people that we can be, like the sky's the limit to what we can accomplish. Like it's really just about self-actualization. 
And it's it, we just happen to do it through dentistry. No, that makes sense. Uh, that mm-hmm. makes sense. I think the listeners got some really good information from us. I um, so. so if, you know, before we wrap up and give people um, your contact information and how they can uh, reach out to you to get um, more information about what you're doing, um, I'm going to shuffle the deck here, um, and this is a fun part for me. As I told you, um, nothing inappropriate, as I like to always say. Okay. Um, and uh, just answer it uh, just with the answer and why, okay? Okay. So just as an example, we'll, we'll start nice. off. Have, ha, would you rather have to grow, hunt, and kill your own food or eat only Taco Bell for a year? Um, grow, hunt. A girl, girl, what, girl hunt and pick my own food. Mm-hmm. And kill and kill and, your own food for a year. You want to do that? Yeah, I would. So n- not not a fan of Taco Bell then? Mm-mm. No. I'm a big health <laughs> nut. The okay. reason why is just like I'm a big health nut. I believe that, you know, we need to stay healthy. That preventative medicine, like I said, is that passion for preventative care. And I know that if I were cool. to eat Taco okay. Bell – um, when I gain five pounds, I look like an Oompa Loompa. So that's really not for me. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Okay. All right. Would you rather take cold showers for the rest of your life or never get more than four hours of sleep ever again? Uh, cold showers, for sure. I um, uh, I actually like the Wim Hof. I'm a fan of Wim Hof, the Iceman. So... It, it's like it helps wake up the body. So if I had to take a cold shower, I probably wouldn't like it, but I'd rather do that. Good night's sleep is priceless. Imp- very important. Okay. All right. Would you rather have your f- hand or, excuse me, your fingers always feel sticky or your throat always feel itchy? I would rather have sticky fingers. Um, sticky fingers. Okay. Yeah. Because if I couldn't do anything with my fingers, I could tell somebody else what to do and they could get something for me. It's <laughs> <laughs> good reasoning. Good reasoning. <laughs> um, so this is a little bit dental related. Would you rather pull your own tooth with a pair of pliers or brand yourself with a cattle prod? Ah. Okay. Well, if it was a little mini cattle prod, I think. A little mini cattle prod. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, true story. Neither of them are good choices. Oh, no. No, no, no. I mean, I had a cowboy patient that like lived out in the middle of nowhere and he did pull his own tooth and broke off. There was It was gross. It was abscessed and no way. Oh, terrible. I don't know why yes. anybody would try that. So no, no. Um, would you rather be able to record your thoughts or your dreams while you sleep? Definitely my dreams, not my thoughts. Yeah, I think that I, I definitely think dreams as well. Yeah, dreams, because um, then I could sort through the nonsense a little bit easier. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Would you rather be single for a year, which just includes no dating? Not that you're, I mean, you're, I think you're married as well. I am. Or married. go on bad dates for a year straight? I would rather go on bad dates because I could have a okay. lot of fun with that. <laughs> yeah, of course you can. 100% you can have fun with that. I did spend a year going on bad dates. I think that was a reality at one time. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So let's see here. Um, would, you accident, would you rather accidentally laugh loudly at a funeral or fart while giving a speech? <laughs> Terrible. That's terrible. Oh, gosh. Well, I'm speaking at Dennis Who's Got Talent, so I'm going to say I would rather, but I'm not, like, hoping that this happens. I think I would rather fart in the speech because there's a chance it could be silent. And if you're up there, yeah. it's, if it's silent and deadly, you can te- tend to stand your own. Yeah. So, so you're going to be at uh, Smiles at uh, Dennis You Got Talent. You going live to Miami? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there too. Oh, sweet. I'm not in the Dennis. I'm not in the Dennis You Got Talent, but I'm I'm speaking at the meeting 
on the regular. Oh, I didn't want to do the, the, the contest. So we'll Let's see each other each down other. there. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Would you three, uh, three more. Would okay. you rather spend the night in a dirty dumpster oh. or a dirty porter potty? <laughs> Terrible. Dirty porta potty, because I or could dirty stand. dumpster. I would sleep standing. Okay, yeah. that would be good. Um, <laughs> would you rather have your jaws wired shut for a month, where you can only drink out of a straw, or what? Wear an eye patch for a year. So jaw closed shut for a month, or an eye patch for a year. Exactly. Uh, jaw closed shut for a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it, if it was a little longer, if it was a year, I would take the eye patch over the jaw shut. But a month versus a year, that's a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the last one, and, and last one, which I ask everybody, because I like this question. Would you rather never be able to use a search engine again, a.k.a. Google, or never use your smartphone apps again? Hmm. Uh, it's got to be the search engine. My apps do a lot of stuff for me. And you, there are apps. You know, it's funny. There are apps that are search engines. So technically, you can always find a workaround there according to that question. There's so always a workaround. I, would, I, I, I agree with you on that one. So, well, thank you for being a good sport and answering those questions. I appreciate it. And I told you nothing inappropriate. There are some inappropriate questions in there, but I'm not going to ask them. So I always, I always <laughs> uh, get through those because... Not the time or place for that. So, Jen, um, let people know uh, the best way to reach out to you. I know you said you're working on some social accounts. But what is the best way for someone who's listening? They want to for- find out more information about what you do, how you do it, a little bit about uh, GPS, Gale Practice Solutions. What's the best way for people to reach out to you and find you online? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I would really want for people to, if they're looking on social, message me on my personal page. Um, we're going to get some other pages set up for GPS, for dental. Um, But the interesting thing here, Len, is that anybody who works with me or knows of me gets to work collaboratively. Um, I get to the point where I give them a password and I'm gonna give our listeners today a password. So if you wanna reach out to me, you can text me at 208-844-0613 and I'll put that on there. Um, But your password is Bluefish Baby. That way I know that they heard the message today, that they resonated that they felt inspired in some way. And um, the message is, is I'm Dr. So-and-so and and I'm ready to bluefish with my team. That way I know that it was meaningful for you. Um, You can message me directly on my social. Um, And also by then, by the time this is out, you should be able to find me also at gpsfordental.com. Perfect. Great. And I know you're on LinkedIn and a couple other places as well, so they can just search search you and find, I'm sure they'll yep. be able to find you. And it's Jen Kirkham, K-I-R-K-H-A-M. She gave you her phone number for texting her and you said, what What was the word, password you should have? Ah, uh, the Blue password what? is Bluefish Baby. Bluefish Baby. Yeah. And I'm going to say, let's have another podcast topic on blue fishing. It's actually a really thing that I love to talk about. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you want to give a hint what that is? It's the art and science of making things happen. The uh-huh. art and science of making things happen. Yep. Mm-hmm. I love that topic too. So we will, let's, uh, let's connect and we'll set up another. I like that. That's really cool. So okay. I never heard of that before either. Uh, Bluefish baby. Yep. So guys, you, you heard it from the expert here. Bluefish baby is the password. You know how to get a hold of her. Um, I hope you enjoyed our, our interaction today. Jen and I were talking about the reasons why your patients stay and refer. We talked about how to connect with them, how important meetings or effective meetings are important, um, why clarity must be there with the service and expectations, and more time does not necessarily necessarily mean more trust. So those are some of the things we talked about today. Um, if you like the episode, please share it. Please tell your friends. Subscribe to the Raving Patients podcast. Um, You can find Jen on social. You find me on social. Reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, And as always, as um, I end these podcasts, uh, remember your reputation matters. Until the next episode, Jen, thanks again for joining me. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great day. Thank you.